All right, but in this case, I just want to go back and review because this is something we're going to be doing uh, this chapter anyways. So just remember, guys, uh, when uh, you're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have common denominators. So the main important thing is we want to find the least common denominator. And remember, the least common denominator is the smallest number that both of your divide denominators divide into. So we look at 3 and 5, and we want to say, what is the smallest number that 3 and 5 both divide into? And that number, Hunter, is 15. So therefore, I need to multiply 3 times 5 and 5 times 3. However, if I just multiply the denominator, I'm changing the value of the fraction, right? 3 over 5 is not the same as 3 over 15. Would you guys agree? So we want to produce what we call equivalent fractions. So I need to make sure I multiply in the numerator and in the denominator. Now that produces 6 over 15 plus 9 over 15, which now, since I have the same denominator, I can just add the numerators, which gives me 15 over 15, which I can reduce to 1. Yes? That should be a 5. You are very correct. Thank you very much. So therefore, that becomes 10. And then that becomes 19, which you cannot reduce. OK. In this example, we'll get the exact same, except we're just going to be subtracting. which gives you 1 over 15. The next example, probably one of the easiest problems and the most missed. Why? Do you guys remember when we did that proportion? Did you guys hear me say cross multiply? I didn't hear it there, so I'm going to pause it. The reason why I say cross multiply because I don't want you guys to remember that. You can easily solve a proportion without cross multiplying. You just solve for your variable x using inverse operations. The reason why I don't like you guys cross multiplying because everybody just remembers cross multiplication, Brian. And they all of a sudden, then they want to turn to multiplying fractions using cross multiplying. We don't use cross multiplication to multiply fractions. All right. So if you just want to eliminate cross multiplication from your memory, you'll be able to survive just fine. When we're multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across. 6 over 15. Now this problem I can reduce. And remember your answers, you always want to reduce them. Uh, always want to put them in reduced form. 6 and 15 both can be divided by 3. So my final answer, final, final answer is 2 fifths. Uh, Melissa, let me ask you a question. Eight, 8 divided by 2 is what? 4. 8 times 1 half is what? 4. So Melissa, would you agree with me then that taking a number, dividing it by another number, is the same thing as multiplying that number by its reciprocal. Because once you say 2 and 1 half are reciprocals. So dividing and multiply, multiplying and div or mu dividing by a number or multiplying by its reciprocal is going to give you the same result. Right? OK. So what I'm trying to show you is here, I'm trying to divide by a number. Now this one's a fraction. Well, it would be just as simple to go ahead and multiply by its reciprocal. So. The reciprocal of 3 uh, three fifths is 5 thirds. Now I just multiply across, and I get 10 over 9. Final answer. OK? Very, very <coughs> common mistakes by a lot of students.